Hi everybody. Thanks for coming along and watching me on the make along with the Christmas advent calendar. As you know, it's day two. And if you were watching the show earlier, you saw that we got this beautiful drop, uh, which I shall take out again for those that have just tuned in now, or if you're watching on recorded a bit later. Um, this is what appeared in box two. I shall show you which is absolutely beautiful and what I decided to do with it I decided to make uh, an adjustable necklace which I will show you and I named it because I was very specific on the gemstones being pearls here it is here and as you can see it's really soft and it's a long line necklace but it can be worn two ways, so you can shorten it or wear it longer. And I used Labradorite because I mixed it with pearls and I called it Making Your Dreams Come True because it was a Christmas theme. And the reason for that is, as you know, I'm into my healing gemstones. Pearls, which I love, are a sign of purity, but they're also a sign of making any situation really good. So something that might go wrong with pearls it'll make you see a positive edge to it so nothing really is a bad thing because you think oh that happened for a reason but now i can do that so you mix that with labradorite which is of the crown chakra and that really is like your dream maker this helps you tone into your dreams think about what you want in life and Labradorite will help you find a way of making your dreams come true. It will find that path. So I put the two together. So any obstacles you get along your journey to fulfilling your emotions will just make it all come true. It will find a way and you will see a positive vibe to it. Now, as you can see, what I've done here is I've put that pearl I've put that pearl in the middle and I've just added some labradorite. So I've added to that and then I've made it quite long, as you can see. Now, if I hold it up against myself, if I were to wear it, it would be that sort of length. Can you see? But if you, I've put a clasp on the front. Sorry, I'm going to take you to overhead now. I've put a clasp on it because although you can just roll it over your head, you may want to wrap it around and wear it as a double theme. So I've made it adjustable and I love jewellery that is flexible. So lots of ways. If I hadn't have put a clasp in, you wouldn't have been able to get it around your head twice. It would have got stuck. So what you're going to need for this. Can you see, first of all, it's quite floaty it's quite sort of like as if I've pearl knotted it although I haven't pearl knotted it and that's because I've used a very fine um, beading thread or you can use fireline which uh, lots of you who, who do seed beading will know about and I would use a 0.4 because I'm using very fine labradorite gemstones and they've got a decent drill hole but you will need a finer thread for that so I would say uh, four uh, a four pound and a size 12 needle and the reason why I decided to do it in that shape if I just put that down here at the moment this is normal beading thread and this is just a little advice because I do a lot of beading and there's so many ways to bead this is your traditional beading thread or tiger line and can you see it's quite bouncy so if I just take a bit off here and were to make a necklace just here can you see how springy it is so if I made a long line necklace that necklace is going to be quite rigid and it's going to be quite bouncy now you may like that design and that's absolutely fine but sometimes I like the drape um, and I wanted this to drape so this would have been it would have given a different texture so I would say if you have got your fire line or even your silk thread that's got the needle, you need a number one or a number two, and that is perfect. So they're the threads you need. Now, to make this particular necklace, let me just put that back on the stand. I'll just wrap that round. 
so you can see. Can you see? It just wraps beautifully round there. And I'll just put that there. So there it is back on the stand. To make this, the tools you're going to use is a pair of crimping pliers, optional, just a pair of pliers, round nose pliers, and just to cut the threads, some cutters. And that's basically all you're going to need. So it's not a lot of tools. You're going to need your beading thread and you're going to need quite a long length. Always cut more than you need. Never sort of say, oh, this is going to be about a 36 inch necklace, which this one is. It's a 36 inch necklace, but you're going to sort of have 40, maybe 45. This is cheap um, in comparison to your piece of jewellery in as much as if you run out, you've got to start again. You cannot join it. So have more than you need because you can always use the extra if you've got, if you make it lows, keep it because you can always make like a little bracelet with it. So always have extra. So I've got about 40 inches of that. On top of that, you're obviously gonna need your gemstones. Now these are two to three mil gemstones. I think these are the two mil ones. Um, and they're micro faceted. If you don't have Labradorite and you don't want to make a dream come true necklace, but you've got some, that we had garnet earlier today and you've got some gemstones that you really want to use in this, use them by all means. And in this design, I use some six mil rice beads here and you'll need 22 of those in total. And on top of that, just for the design, I'm using a little two mil sterling silver spacer beads. But again, if you don't have those, use 11.0 Mayuki absolutely fine so this is just a guideline but you can take it off in every direction what you will need is a cloth I'm using a um, bolt ring but it could be a lobster clasp an extender chain so here's an extender chain and about an inch to two inches French wire I'll tell you why in a minute I love French wire I think it gives a professional finish and I just think if you get into the habit of making a professional finished piece then it really sets you in good stead especially if you then decide at a future date that you want to start selling it these are the sort of finishes that one will justify the price that you want to charge two if you're wearing for yourself you feel really happy if somebody says oh can I have a look at your necklace and you think yes look away um, so we need some French wire and I'll show you why I use it and then you've got a choice you're gonna need two crimp tubes which are these lovely little tubes. And you can either have, because it depends if you've got them, and I'll show you both variations, a crimp tube cover, which is that one there, or which are my personal favorites and what I used for the necklace, really easy, and I'll show it first, is a clamshell. And these are the clamshells, and I know that we sell them on Jewelry Maker. And it's called a clamshell and it's really really good if you're a beginner if you've never made jewelry before or you're not overly confident with crimping pliers because i said it was optional the option was if you wanted to use the crimp tube you might need to use some crimping pliers. it makes it much easier but you don't have to and then you need a head pin and this is the first thing i'm going to do and you attach a pearl and that is only pure decoration to put onto the end of the extender chain so I'll start that's where I'm going to start right now and again it's optional but these are the finishing touches that set your jewelry apart and make it that bit more professional so again you know get into the habit I always say that get into the habit of making professional jewelry so I'm gonna begin and I'm gonna don my glasses so I can see what I'm doing if you've got any questions if any of you are watching and you've got any questions just text in ask away or if I'm going too fast, or if you're sitting there, because I did put all of this out on the Facebook page, so you might be thinking, right, I'm ready to go, and we're going to do a make-along together. Fantastic. So, easy technique, we're going to do a wrap loop, and I'm going to wrap loop directly onto the extender chain. So again, we use our round nose pliers, and I put them tight up against that pearl, and then I'm going to face it away from me, and then I'm gonna turn my pliers. The reason I turn my pliers is it just makes it easier to make that loop because now I'm going to use the plier to shape a circle. And it gets so far, can you see? It gets so far and it doesn't wanna move. So again, I'm just gonna move my pliers out of the way and then do another 180 degrees. So it's now 
looking like that. Can you see? And then with that, I'm going to attach that to one end of your extender chain. Oops. Let me just get that back. I've hidden my hat. That's going to go on the extender chain. And there it goes. And you can hear it click. Can you see that? It's now on. I'm going to hold that. And then I'm just going to give that a turn. And I normally do two turns. But some of you like to do three or four. That's entirely up to you. But just a couple of turns. And if you want to get a rigid, um, tight, so just pull it with your crimping pliers. And when you're happy, just cut off the excess, holding that bit so it doesn't fly, and then just neaten it so there's no scratchy bits. There, so there's no scratchy bits. So there is the end connector, which I think is a beautiful finishing point to your um, extender chain. And then all you're going to do, and I'm going to do it right now, is I'm going to add the jump ring to that with a pair of pliers. And again, opening and closing, really simple techniques. Now I'm going to find another one. Here we go. That was a closed jump ring. Um, you don't want to use a closed jump ring because uh, you never open it. And then put that through and then close that up and then we're ready to go with that. So we just, and then we can leave that to one side. So we've now got one end and our lobster clasp or bolt ring is the other end. So now we're going to start with the design. So here we go. With the French wire, which is here, I've got a little length. It comes in lengths of about 12 inches and you get lots and lots of them. Fantastic. And I would say if you get the opportunity, just buy some because I use it all the time, especially if I'm using pearl jewellery. And all you're going to need is sort of like about a centimetre, just a bit less than a centimetre, and just cut two that are roughly the same length. You want them sort of equal length, so there, you get used to it by eye. So we've got two lengths ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put crimp tube on, or if I'm going to use a lobster claw which a lot of you have asked me about and I'll show you the first one so you put that one on first and put it through as if you're going to be a pac-man so you put it through the back so you've got like the thread looks like a tongue then you're going to put the crimp tube onto that then you're going to your French wire, if I can get that through, there we go, it goes through, leave your crimp bead tube there for now, then you're going to then feed on your clasp which is here, put it through the crimp tube, sorry if it's all hands, pull that till you're happy and then you're going to pull it taut like such till you're happy. So that is all that and then pull, just keep pulling. Can you see that the French wire then really uh, goes into a lovely little circle and when you're happy, now here because we're using a clamshell we don't necessarily need to make that into a lovely neat little circle using our pliers and I'll show you the other method a bit later so we just really give that a good old squidge because that is going to be where all the strength and holding all of your necklace together is going to be so make sure that is really tight so there we go and um, yeah this method sorry I've just completely forgotten is really to use a crimp tube cover so <laughs> Take that one off, and as I say, now, two, this is a really good method actually. If you don't have crimp tubes, as Claire has done, use two pliers to make a little circle. Because if you're using the clamshells, I've just realized you don't need to do all of this. It's the beauty of clamshells. So there, 
when you're happy, just put that into your crimping pliers and make that little edge. And then we're going to try and make a little circle with it. Whoops. Because that's it, it's turned. Can you see what that's done now? It's turned it into a little circle. And then we're going to add our crimp tube. So this is the crimp tube. So we put that on, put it over the crimp. This is a bit delicate. Do not worry because sometimes they are a bit awkward. This is the nature of little crimps, but get into the habit of using them because this is a lovely little finish. So take your time, do not worry. This happens to me all the time at home. Just get it on, so get on. So if not, just give that a bit more of a squidge. Always on live TV, but it will go on, I assure you. There we go. It's gonna go on, it doesn't wanna go on. We are gonna get there. It's only got an hour, but we will get there. Right, I think that's on. Let's make sure that is on. And make sure that is on properly. Beauty of live TV. I do this all day long and it goes on absolutely fine. But you just, like I say, you will find that sometimes it wants to be awkward. But do not panic and don't give up. Like I say, you're in charge, and then when you're ready, just give it a squidge. Like such. And then that is on securely. So that is on securely now. Now I'm gonna quickly show you, with a bit of beading thread, what the difference is with the clamshell. So say if I've got some beading thread here, I would feed, and you can see, you can then make the choice of why you want what you want to use. So here, You'd put your clamshell on, you would get your crimp tube. Let's move that down, get the crimp tube, bring that up, and you just give that a good old squidge, like so, like so. Again, just making sure that that is really firm. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna cover that over your crimp tube. And then you're just going to put your jump ring. And if this was the extended chain or your lobster clasp, you would then just attach that to it. And it's as easy as that. So then you would add, if we had another lobster, uh, another chain you would add that but can you see how quickly that was so there's your two ends so if I get my other one then the choice is entirely yours I made that look a bit more difficult but with a um, crimp tube cover you will need your, your French wire crimp tube and a crimp cover if you use a clamshell you won't need the French wire you just need a crimp tube and they're the two effects that you get so the choice is yours. this is so much easier and you get a professional finish with that. So, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the uh, clamshells. So once we've got that, you've attached your clasp on, and we've got this, we now just set about doing the design. And in this design, I started off with one spacer bead. I'm gonna move all of my, um, everything out of the way because Inevitably, when you start doing this, everything catches on it. So I'm going to move everything up there, out the way, so that we can just concentrate. And if I move this so that you can see it a bit better. So, yep, we're here. And I'm going to do 10 of the little gemstones. So this will take time. But there, we've got one. And I use these gemstones as tiny as they are. I absolutely love working with gemstones. I don't know if I'm sort of um, a masochist because, you know, these are 
hidden holes that you can't see, but I absolutely love working with it. I think it's worth the effort of making it. I mean, if you had large drill holes or larger gemstones, you would make this make much quicker. But I just think it's really good to persevere with these little micro gemstones, and they are absolutely wonderful. But as you can see, they do take a bit of time. Now, I know that there's a tip on taking them straight from the strand, but I found that um, these particular ones have got quite a fine drill hole, so it, it, you, you won't be able to do that with this particular one. But I know that when I've had spinel in the past, um, if you wanted to make this with spinel, you can take it directly off the strand and it's absolutely fine. You won't, you know, I work directly off the strand. But this one, um, it just, the holes are just that bit smaller. So it just will only allow you to just go through one strand, which makes it a bit more difficult, but it's all fun. And the thing with Labradorite, it really is worth it. I mean, it's such a beautiful gemstone and the pattern soon builds up but this is sort of something you'd make in an afternoon it's not difficult but it's really worth it and then you've got it forever so i'm just going to try and find so we could be here for the next hour just doing a few of these but can you say oops now that one flew so that's gone across the studio but um yeah so just so but can you see as we're building up slowly and there I can see there's a hole there, so just turn and I'm going to count them in a minute, see how many I've done. See, sometimes they go on really fast. You get used to it, funny enough, because as I say, I, you know, I make tassels and I use little gems like these the whole time. You sort of get used to um, them being quite difficult to handle. Um, but you just don't mind, you just get on with it. So let's see how many I've done. Two, four, six, eight, ten, exactly. So I want to do ten there, and then I'm going to do a space speed just for design, and then I'm going to do another ten um, before I start the actual design, because this is going to be um, at the back, and so we're doing another ten. One. I don't know if any of you are making along. Are you sitting there with your gemstones and making it with me? Because it's likely to workshop then, isn't it? But um, yeah, or have you used gemstones that are easier to do? You could do this with sea beads as well. There's nothing stopping you from making this with some love. You can get Labradorite effect seed beads, and I would use 11 O's so much quicker. And you'd get a very similar effect. Um, but I love using genuine gemstones, which is why I've done this. So I'm still feeding on. Sometimes you get on a roll, and then sometimes they suddenly all decide, no, they, they don't want to, but we just keep going. And as I say, it, if nothing else, it really teaches your patience. Now, it's funny because I've got no patience for intricate seed beading, yet I've got the patience to um, put the, the little gemstones on because I just love the effect. Look at that, you know, just beautiful. So high-end, and I just think it is worth the actual patience of doing this. So we just keep going till we find another one. As I say, sometimes you get on a roll and they just go on and sometimes they don't want to, but that's part of the joy of making these. So there we go. So I think I've got six. We will get a pattern in a minute going, but I just want to get it started. And here we go. There we go, and we've got a hole. If they don't want to, you know, you can't find them going around, just give them a little turn and see if then little holes sort of expose themselves. With Labradorite, it's a bit more difficult, but some, if you, again, if you're dealing with sort of garnet, the holes sort of show themselves. So I'm just having a bit of a, a time where none of them want to go on, but this happens, but there we go. So we've just got another one. So we've got three, six, seven. I want to do 10 again. So And this again comes to where if you're pricing jewelry, you've got to factor in this time. It's 
delicate. And the thing, the lovely thing is, you, you, we now get these lovely microfaceted gemstones at really good prices. But that's not the true value. We'll see. So I think that was ten there, and then I'm going to put one of these on. And this is the start of the pattern. So. Earlier, if you were watching the show, I said, if you're using sterling silver, try not to put the sterling silver right next to a pearl. So I've put one there, and then I'm going to put on a labradorite. So this labradorite is going to sit next to the pearl. Then I'm going to put our first pearl on. They've got a bigger drill hole. And then I'm going to put another labradorite on. Here we go. And then I'm going to put a seed bead. And this is just a sort of part of the pattern, part of the texture. And then we're going to do nine of these now, because there's going to be 11 with the gaps of the Labradorite. So let's see. Come on. Now I can see you coming a little. All good fun, all good fun. There we go. One. Two. There we go. Three. And then four. As I say, you get them and then one minute they go on and the next minute they don't want to go on. It's really Odd how that sometimes happens, but there they just remember that they all have a drill hole, so in there somewhere they will all eventually go on. So now, how many have we got? We've got four, so we need another five. One, two. Talking to the readies. Let's go and get, let's move you around a bit. Again, just move you around. Sometimes you can sort of see a hole. There we go. So, how many have we got now? So, we've got two, four, six, seven. We need another two. And it's always a good idea to count because um, what you don't want is when it's finished, you've counted them wrong. So, always double check that you're getting the right amount of beads on. I mean, when it's like this, it's quite easy. If you've got larger beads and, and they're, they're just going on straight away. I mean, like the necklace that um, Zena was wearing today that uh, we gave her, that, you know, took an hour at the most to finish the whole necklace. So bigger beads, bigger drill holes, easy to do. But I love doing intricate work, so. So here we go, we've got one of those, and then I'm going to put another bead on. I just love the colour of Labrador, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful colour. And then I'm going to put our second pearl on, and each side is going to have ten of these, so we've got to do this ten times, but can you see that pattern building up there? Beautiful, and the quality of our um, Labradorite continues to get better and better and better. Um, and this is a particularly beautiful strand of Labradorite. It has sort of like almost very pale blue hues to it, which is absolutely wonderful. So there we've got that. And then we've got one of the spacer bees, two mil spacer bees. Can you see how that little spacer bead just gives it that little pop? Even though these are really sparkly, it just adds that something extra. I, I always talk about texture, and this is why, you know, with just get all, you know, all the components that you can um, in your stash, because it just makes for such higher quality jewellery. The more choice you have, uh, the more creativity you can have with your jewellery making. And it doesn't have to be... Um, you know, elaborate findings it can be something simple, but that something simple can make such a difference 
to your piece of jewellery. I'm bringing them ever closer to me. I'm, yeah. Yeah. We'll just keep going. Here we go. So, oops. As I say, here we go. So we've now got three. We want another six. So hold it. One. Two. We go. Does that want to go in? Maybe not. All good fun. They all do as I told, but I'll just whisk that round. Sometimes they go on easily, sometimes they don't. So we just. There are three. Four. If you used to seed beading, you know, <laughs> it would, you know, you would be finished this by now if you were just throw That's the beauty of seed beads. They've got such a lovely big drill hole that you, you, they just go through. But as I say, I do like the look of the genuine article. And you now this is a lovely thing to do in the afternoon. And actually, if nothing else, it teaches your patients. It really does. Um, and in most of my work I'm using these little spacer beads either as spacers or in tassels so I'm used to sort of it taking a while so I'm just going to count these two four six eight look at that we've got too many so I'm going to take that one off it's me talking so then I'm going to put one of these little two mil. Now the two mils are very easy to find because you can see the drill holes, they're really big. And then see if we can thread this one back on. Probably doesn't want to be threaded back on, but you go, there we are. And then another rice bead. This is the beauty of beading. Beading in of itself is not difficult. It's not a difficult craft and it's something that if you start off in jewellery making, it's a lovely way to begin because you can make jewellery that looks beautiful straight away, very wearable and really doesn't need a lot of tools. But if you want to um, be proficient at it, then it's the little finishing touches, as I say, you know, starting and finishing. The finishing and really how you make the jewellery really will differentiate you from other beaders. So even though it's a simple technique, when you look at really good quality um, necklaces, they will have a, a really lovely finish. I've been to craft fairs where I've seen lovely necklaces, but the finish is very, very basic, um, which is quick. But I just think for that extra couple of minutes, it really is worth getting to know how to do it properly uh, because it does make it does affect the price you can charge more if your finish is good and people will come back to you so I just you know I, I always say get into the habit of just trying to get that professional finish so we've got two four six so we need another three that is another one we we're on a bit of a roll then weren't we with the bees just popping on which was really good two three and then we're one of these so it's quite a simple pattern and I'm going to show you in a minute how it's looking And it does start to build up quite fast, so you can see there. And can you see why I'm using a fine thread? I'll just show you now. When that falls, it just falls really 
delicately and that just gives it a really expensive feel. If I did this with the beading thread, and imagine that, look, it just is bouncy, bouncy. You, you know, this is great. Beading thread is really good. If you've got large gemstones and you want to do satellite necklaces or you want to have a beaded necklace that sits beautifully round, perfect. There's horses and courses for them. But if you want that lovely drape as if it's got, it's got, um, it's been knotted, then definitely go for your fire line, if possible, or a fine thread. So, let me see. Here we go. One, and then we're doing that. Did that go on? No, that didn't want to go on. Oops. Sometimes they don't want to go on, but they will. Um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to blow my nose, so just bear with me. It's looking down all the time. I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm just going to blow my nose a sec. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Luckily, that wasn't caught on camera. So, here we go. Here we go. So, we're doing another nine. So, we're doing one, two, three. Four, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight. Here we go. Just, I'm determined to get this one. There, get in there. See, eight. One more. Nine. Then we're going to go to our space bead. Then we're going to go to another labradorite gemstone. I don't know if you can see on camera how lovely and uh, shimmery these beautiful. Labradorite are, and these are all jewellery maker. These pearls are jewellery maker, and they're absolutely exquisite. As you can see, look at the luminosity on that; it's absolutely beautiful. And we're going to push one of those on, one of the space beads on. <coughs> And although this looks, you know, this is taking much longer, it really is worth the effort with these lovely micro faceted gemstones. I just absolutely adore them. As I say, I buy them every time they come on because I just love the finish. And although they are fiddly, you do get a lovely, lovely finish with them. Now, this has taken a, a while, so I think in the time we've got here, unfortunately, if this had been smaller gemstones, we might have been able to finish it, but you get the idea. So what I'm going to do is, after this one, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how we do the middle bit and then continue. So this will be a shorter version, but I'm sure you'll, you've got the idea because you'll need to do 10 to make the one um, that I made, you're going to need to do 10. So, and then you do, so when I've done this one, we'll assume that I've done 10 and that we're coming up to the 11th one. So it's five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Can you see why I say this is very therapeutic? If you're sitting at your table and you've got the radio on, it just, you can really zone out with these. It's absolutely wonderful. Right, now then, one more. And I'm going to assume that this is now our 11th. So we'll pretend that this is our 11th bead. 
So I'm going to put the bead through because we do something slightly different here. So here, on our 11th bead, once I've done the, uh, I've put the thread on, you pick up four of your four mil. So I'll snap this shut because this strand had very various sizes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two on of these. I'm going to add because you're thinking, when's this happening, Susie? Then I'm going to put oh, my lovely pearl drop that you got in the advent calendar on. And the reason I changed up to a slightly different size is because I didn't want the labradorite to go through the, um, the bale. So I, I just added a slightly bigger size, slightly easier to see the drill holes. And again, it's a nice little tip if you're uh, doing beading. So we put that through. So I've now got this. So it looks as if we've continued. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that through, right, I'm going to put that through, can you see what, what I've done here? I'm now going to go through that pearl, so I'm going to go through the pearl, which it will let me do, excuse me, there we go, can you see that? Going through the pearl, Gently take it round and we do that so we just make sure that everything is at the right size like that. And can you see now, did I not put one on? Yeah, it's gone through, but that one's gone through, but get the idea. Let's try and get that from out of there. Always it likes to play up, doesn't it? So we can worry about that afterwards, but you get that will come through eventually. So you just play with that until you get through. So that's where you join the pearl, and then you just go back to what we we're doing before, which is replace this and the bead. I've just realised I don't have talk back. I don't know if we're all trying to talk to me, guys. I'm so sorry if you. <laughs> I can hear you. I am so sorry. I bet you've been saying, "Oh, I'm so sorry." <laughs> right. So we. So, and then we just start. So we're now on the, the journey back. So we're, we're now just on our journey back. Poor old Ollie and Tom have been tearing their hair off because they've been saying, Susie, move your bit to the left a bit. And I've been just carrying on. So that's the thing. This is such a mindful. I, this is why I love beading and I love working with gemstones one i love the feel because when you're working with them those that are into their healing gemstones will understand so even working with them you sort of get the energy and you get really high on the energy and this labradorite is just beautiful oh we've got a text on the screen let me read that it says susie i have this charm necklace oh i love this dream necklace got the pearls and labradorite and was lucky enough to win WAF this week. So I've ordered the advent calendar. Oh, well done. And that was from Lorna. Thank you, Lorna. Wow, this is beautiful. Oh, well, I'd love to see your version of this. This is such a, this is sort of, to me, this is a perfect Christmas gift to somebody as well, because it's like, make your dreams come true. Whatever you want in life, wear this necklace. Just say to the universe, this is what I want, and wear this necklace. Give her with love, 
that will happen. That's my gift to you. So, uh, so uh, apart from just being a beautiful piece of jewellery to wear, really simple, really versatile, goes with everything as well. What you know, what doesn't go with Labradorite? And I think, you know, universally one of the most beautiful gemstones. It's a magical stone. It's a gemstone of transformation, but such a magical stone. Not because it contains magic, because it just looks fantastic. It shimmers. It's got you see chatoyancy in it or labradorescent as they call it it has so many color variations it's i you know i just don't think you could get you could make anything more beautiful than labradorite and in these little faceted gemstones they're like little diamonds to me because they've got that lovely silvery look to them absolutely love them love 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 them so you know it is worth the perseverance of, you know, just working with these gems. And funny enough, you know, because I'm doing this and it's very slowly and you're thinking, gosh, I could have finished that by now, Susie. And um, I don't know, you know, you might even be thinking, oh my goodness, that looks painful. But it's not. It's, I'm actually not worried at all by it. I'm actually really, really happy. And I'm in my little happy space. Two, four, six, eight. Have I got ten? Two, four, six. Eight. You see, I've done one too many chatting, so I'm going to take that off. This is what you want to make sure you do nine, then your silver bead, and then the... Now, why did I do 11? You're thinking, why 11, Susie? One, it was a really good spacing for the design, but two, 11 actually is one of the other numbers for your chakras. I don't know if you knew that. So uh, chakra is normally seven, but you can get um, higher planes of chakras and you can get 11. Um, so that's one of the reasons I went, which is more to do with from your throat chakra upwards and through to your crown chakra and above up to the universe. So I thought that was very apt using um, Labradorite and pearls because they're both of the uh, crown chakra. So I decided to really use the 11 chakra number. So with my jewellery, there's always a reason. It's never random. If you ever wonder, just ask me. Sort of, so it has that sort of, and that's really to help really concentrate that dream making ability to come true because I'm really honing in on that sort of crown chakra for you, not only in the gemstones, but also in the, in the way the necklace is designed. Are any of you doing a make along with me? Have you progressed further than me? <laughs> Have you finished? <laughs> you imagine, come on, I'm waiting for the cloth to go on, Susie. Right. I just love working with this is what I'm like in my studio I just switch off I have sort of sometimes I have um, jewelry maker on but in the afternoon if it's finished um, I might just put some mindful music on you can get some lovely relaxing music and then I'm in my little happy place with all my gemstones and they do radiate and I also um, everything I make or the gemstones before I make them I place them on a selenite plate so that they've, I've cleansed them of everybody that's touched any of the gemstones beforehand. And that's, you know, if I'm making commissions as well, it's, it's you know, everybody gets really clean jewellery, if you know what I mean. But I will cleanse the gemstones and then I make, and I'm making it with lovely, happy thoughts. Never make jewellery when you're in a bad mood because it does, one, everything goes wrong, but two, it does sort of affect, it's like if you're in a bad mood or you've got somebody in the household that's in a bad mood, it affects the whole atmosphere of the house, doesn't it? Everybody's sort of a bit on edge. But if everyone's happy, then, you know, it's lovely. But you get one person that is in a bad mood and it just upsets the sort of the whole energy of the house. And it's the same when you're making jewellery. So always be happy. And then when I've finished, I will place this on a selenite plate just to cleanse it of my energy so that it's just refreshed. So I'm just going to count this, two, four, six, eight. I've got one more. So, 
Now, some of you are watching and thinking, I'm not into healing gemstones at all, Susie. Not interested in that. But that's one of the reasons I got into making gemstone jewellery, because it just has that effect. And most people that I have uh, met and talked to, they may not have been into the, the sort of the healing element and the mindfulness, because that's what it is, of gemstones. But they just start to, when they're wearing the jewellery, they start to feel that lovely energy. And, you know, I've spoken to people say, oh, you know, sometimes the jewellery will tell me what to wear that day. And I'm thinking, it, it really is, it really is. They think, you know, my husband thinks I'm crazy, but I, I wear lots of malas, as you know, I love my malas. And um, I will go into my, my drawer, I've got a drawer with them all, and I'll look at them. And, and one of them will say, no, you, me, you wear me today, please. And it's true, and, and, and that energy it gives off is wonderful. And it might be the energy I needed for that day. Right, now. I hope you're enjoying this make-along, everyone. It's a really sort of easy make to make. As you can see, look, here we go. And I'm just going to continue just for another at least one so that you can really get the idea of how beautiful these gemstones can look and as I say these are all jewellery maker this is a strand that I bought that was a long strand I've got about three of these that I've bought that are very long sort of almost meter length strands of varying sizes so you've got your fours and all in them but aren't they beautiful and this is the thing until you start making jewellery you don't realize how beautiful the gemstones are and um it's such, I use Labradorite in a lot of my Marlers of Spaces because I love that sort of, it helps you be intuitive about reaching your goals and sort of goal setting and it helping to find a way. So I try and add Labradorite where I can. It's a lovely subtle gemstone in your jewellery. It's not sort of a look at me, it's a very subtle one. So really, really easy to incorporate. But it's wonderful. I mean, I'm looking at this one. It's got lovely sort of peachy tones to it. And it's going on good on you because I wanted that one in my little necklace. Some have got a lovely turquoise blue. Some have got a lovely sky blue to it. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And because it, you take your time with this, you can see them. So I'm doing two, four, six. So I need another three. Another three, come here, there you go. And all of these are going to be friends with each other's for ever, aren't you? These little stones, you might have been with another friend on the strand and I've just tipped you out, but um, you make new friends with each other. And then the lovely sterling silver. As I say, the sterling silver really is just to add a little bit of extra pop and zing to your jewellery. So, I just need that one. And then I'm going to add the pearl. Now, we're obviously not going to have time to finish this, so I'm just going to do a few more threads, and then when Ollie tells me I've got a few minutes left, I will then show you how to finish it. This would be the oddest looking necklace. But it's surprising, you know, I just, you know, I've been doing this now for what, nearly an hour, and I've really got to grips with the size of the gemstones, and I could work with them all day. And the fact that it's sort of a bit more fiddly than if you're used to seed beads, but you just get to know them, and you sort of get to work with the uh, little gemstones and the fact that the gem the little gem holds may be difficult to find it really doesn't matter you just sort of go with the flow and uh, it really puts you in a happy place it really does right right so I'm I'm gonna do one more of these and I really want to finish 
just going to put one more on determined to put one more on there you go it's not finished but we're going to pretend again because I want to show you how to finish it again so we're going to do the same thing again and hopefully I'll do a better job of before so we're going to put on our crimp tube I've showed you how to do the clamshell which is really easy and me being me I'm going to show you the more difficult way of doing it because that's me and this is the way I do for all my seed beads I'm um, not seed beads my pearl necklace makes I normally do it this way with the pearls so don't worry that it um, I've made it look hard or it's complicated once you um, start to do it regularly it really is quite simple I think when when you're um, live on air you know what the telly's like it says Susie I'm going to show you up call yourself a jewelry maker I don't think so 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 it really doesn't bother me on air but can you see right now I'm going to do it properly I'm going to do the crimp tube in there so I'm going to crimp it crimp it that way give it a good old crimpy 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 really really make sure that that is solid because that is you that is where your weak point in your jewelry is going to be and then here we go with the old crimpy cover it probably won't want to go on but I am determined it will and look at that straight on and this is what I mean that went straight on and that's how it should be so there you go and that is the finish you're after can you see that so this is the oddest necklace but can you see so you've got that is what I call sort of your French wire connectors you've got your extender chain and you've got your dinky little necklace so <laughs> let's pretend <laughs> right so I hope you enjoyed that I really enjoyed that in that hour and um, Wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, goodbye and thank you so much for watching. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Jewelry Maker app. Head over to your app store now and search Jewelry Maker and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favorite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured on today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's best sellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click on the schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching On The Go with Jewelry Maker. Buying with Jewelry Maker couldn't be easier. Here's a quick overview of how to get involved. When you see a product you like and you want to purchase, you will see the graphics appear on the screen. You'll see the item code and a starting price. As time goes on, you'll see the price drop. And as viewers call in and customers add it to their baskets online, you'll also see the quantity decrease too. No matter at what point you order, everybody pays the final low price. And there's only one PMP charge on everything you purchase throughout the day we offer you a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there's no risk whether you're purchasing for the first time or any time. Happy shopping with Jewelry Maker.